he said, you know, he didn't want to make music that was like video game music. He wanted to make movie music, like an actual proper soundtrack. Cool. And I think a lot of that music, you know, that shows because you can can listen to it now, and even you know, 20 years later, a lot of this music is still really, really impressive, really awesome. Well, it's funny because uh, I think the last time you were on the show, I remember talking about the music, and um, when me and my sister were little, we would like make up lyrics to random songs because we were just <laughs> strange. <laughs> nice. But um, yeah, the music in these games is has always been so great. And right here, what you see in the background, if you, if you pay attention, actually, the death egg is rising up as we're progressing. And you'll see the oh, egg bots cool. flying out of it as it goes up through the clouds. Now, you saw those, those signs there, and that the sign is actually a pretty cool feature. Um, it is optional, first off, so if you want to turn it off, you can. But um, Sonic games, as they progress through 3D, face the challenge of how do you kind of raise the difficulty through the later stages without adding these bottomless pits? Right. You know, and so the bottomless pits are kind of, they're kind of frustrating because you just die, and so... You know, in a platformer game, it's understandable, but still, it is a little frustrating when you're going from doing really well to just death. So we've added these signs to let you know anytime a bottomless pit is near to kind of watch out because you've got one coming up. So I really appreciate that. And I'm, call me what you will yeah. if I'm not hardcore enough, but <laughs> I, re I, I really could have used that 10 years the ago. bottomless pits get you, Jeff. <laughs> that, that really would have been super helpful back then. Game no. looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, every single level has been essentially reimagined in HD, and then even... So the, this is the classic level right here as classic Sonic. Now this level is completely different from what modern Sonic will play. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to show you guys modern Sonic after this and you'll see just how different it is. These clouds, one of my favorite parts of the original level and you get to bounce on these again. That's awesome. And if we can pull this off, oh, oh. almost, almost made it up there. But there are multiple paths and that's another key feature of any good Sonic game, just like Sonic 4, is you've got your high path, your medium path, your low path. And the trick is to kind of figure out, um, you know, can you stay on the high path? Can you manage to keep it up for a long time? These, some Sonic fans might recognize. Let's see if I can pull this off. What we want to do here is take this, and as it's falling apart, we want to get up a little bit further. I'm going to try and make it here. There we go. Nice. So Classic Sonic here has just that spin dash. He's got the jump. He doesn't have the homing attack. So that is something that I think the purest fans will appreciate um, over Sonic 4, is that he doesn't have the homing attack. He plays just like the Genesis games in that regard. So is there any gameplay difference in terms of his feature set going from modern to, to classic? Completely. It's okay. a completely different set. It's, uh, actually, the, the levels themselves are built very differently mm -hmm. just for each Sonic. So. Gotcha. So all those Genesis fans, I think, will really appreciate the classic Sonic. Um, a lot of people that might not have played many of them were the newer 3D games, just because they, for whatever reason or another, you know, they decided, I, don't wanna, I didn't want to touch the 3D Sonic. They'll certainly love this, because this is going to feel very familiar to them. Now, at the same time, I think a lot of the, the younger audience that really, really started with the 3D games are or enjoyed this quite a bit, will probably come into this saying, oh, this, what's this 2D stuff? I don't know right. about this. And then they'll, they'll go out of it saying, wow, all those, those old guys on the internet that said it was really good, were, they had something there. So <laughs> They weren't crazy. It'll, that, I, it'll have mutual appreciation on both sides, I think, after that, yeah. Now, is this the first non-DLC Sonic game for PS3 and 360? Um, it is not. Oh. Sonic Unleashed uh, was before that. Uh, now, Sonic Unleashed, though, was, was kind of, uh, it was very polarizing for people because it had these daytime levels that everyone loved. The daytime levels were fantastic, and then it had the Werehog, um, and the Werehog, either you loved it or you hated it, pretty much. Uh, so there was a lot of hate going on for that. So what we've taken for the modern stages here, and this is one of my favorite parts of the level, wow, right here, that. by the way. That is so cool. Um, the modern parts of Sonic Generations pull a little bit from the daytime levels of Unleashed, and also they pull from Sonic Colors. So it's like the best of Sonic in 3D. That, that formula has become what is the, the modern here. So that was classic. So how different is a stage in 3D versus 2D? I guess you'll probably show that to yeah, us. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll just let you see it. Yeah. Look at this guy getting A's, trying to show off here. So, hey, I don't. I don't get A's, man. I guess. No, okay. <laughs> if you're in 3D, everything is just blazing by. It's a really, really cool experience. You're gonna notice that these levels are typically much, much faster paced because of the boost that we've got, and that's the bottom left corner right there. So when I hit the boost, that's X. We get that blue aura around Sonic, and he goes crazy fast. Cool. And he can do those tricks while he's in there, right? He and can. That, and that helps with boost. It does. The tricks will refill the boost. Gotcha. Now, the, the, the gameplay mechanics look kind of similar to, to Colors. They are. Which is a good thing, because mm -hmm. Colors was yeah, awesome. Yeah, Colors is a great game. Yes. Yeah, so yeah as mentioned, it's, it's very much um, a sort of hybrid of Colors and Unleashed, and then they've improved the formula from there, and the result is this. So it's come out really, really well. Now, are the, the Wisps still present in the, in the 3D version? Ah, that's a good question. Um, the Wisps, you won't see in any of of these levels because we're looking at a, a level from Sonic and Knuckles at this oh, okay, point. Okay. So Wisps, in, in terms of history, have not appeared yet. 
Um, will wisps appear in the future? That, that, that's a good question. Oh. Maybe if there is a Sonic Colors level, you might see wisps. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Who knows? So what I'm trying to do right now is get to the high path. There we go. And the boost that I'm using here is kind of a, it's a double-edged sword because you can't just hold boost to win as I've seen people on our forums, you know, try to, to say those naysayers. Um, it actually requires a lot of skill to use boost effectively and often. So the trick is that as you play more, as you practice, just like the original Sonic games, as your skill improves, you can complete the levels much, much faster. You can get your time down. And then, of course, you can see how you uh, fare against other people on the internet. Man, you are good. It's like therapeutic watching you play. It's very, oh, it's good. very it's relaxing. Good. It, should be, it should be a calming experience, yeah. Awesome. So here is another area where we've got multiple different paths. Uh, actually, every single level in this game, both as classic and as modern, has multiple paths in almost every variation. And they'll, they'll converge and they'll split up again. Let's see if I can make it. There now, we go. Were you switching back and forth on your own just now, or that's just part of the way the, the path goes? Uh, that, that's the way the camera pans. Oh, okay. So right here, it's got us into like a Sonic Colors style. And if I can stop this guy from pushing that button. So if you don't stop him fast enough, he'll actually block this section of the level off, and you have to go above, which is going to take a little bit longer. But right here, we get that shortcut. Oh, wow. Now, the original level, um, and just like the end of the classic level, everything was kind of falling apart. So in the modern version, you're going to see a different take on that. As the level starts to fall apart right up here, everything starts to crumble. Um, it's got a really kind of cool take on... Uh, what if this level were, were brought back as a 3D level? And also, what could we do in the modern levels was the dev team's idea to really make it fun and exciting. So you've played a lot of these levels, you know, countless times if you're a Sonic fan on the old, like, Sega Genesis. So I know we're playing as Classic Sonic do? first. Uh, this level is one of my favorites in the game, actually, just because it references uh, a number of other levels in Sonic games of old. So if I can pull this off, let's see. Wait for it. Oh, almost. What we're going to do, if you can stay to the high path, you can stay out of the water. At this point, we're just going to go for a little undersea adventure here. Yeah, this, this is giving me that sort of uh, labyrinth zone uh, yes. feel, right? Yes, yeah. now you guys ready to, to feel a little, little scary? Oh, here we can go. Can we turn up the music? Just, just, just wait. Wait for it. All oh. the Sonic fans about to start panicking. Yep. Here we go. Ah, you, guys, you guys think it should get I a bubble? I remember this. I'm starting to hyperventilate a little bit. I should bit. probably get a bubble, huh? Get bubble? it. Should I, Let's hear should I, should I get that bubble? I don't... Okay, all right. <laughs> So and I love how they re they, they like reorchestrated that uh, panic. Uh, yes. Does he still do that little animation where he, where he sucks up the bubble? Um, he he does. I, th I think, I think when, you, when you're jumping, it doesn't show up. But I think when you're when you're standing, maybe it does. Or at he, least in um, the old games. Yeah, we can we can try that. When he jumps and grabs it, what happens is he kind of uh, he he opens his mouth a little bit. And yeah, yeah, sucks yeah. it up. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that music I think is perhaps one of the most traumatic songs for a lot of us in our childhood. Oh my childhood. god, it's like, nerve-wracking. You're, you're in the pool, right, and you hear that song, and like, your immediate reaction is, I gotta get out of here. Yeah, I, just, I gotta I get up. I gotta I get out. I don't care if I'm in three feet of water. <laughs> I, need to, I need to get out of the pool right <laughs> now. <laughs> so, it's funny. I've, I had a discussion with the guy not that long ago about that. It, it really is interesting how that music has such a lasting impression on us, even that little short clip, but it's got a very Jaws-ish vibe, oh, yeah, I think, yeah, to yeah, it yeah. when you hear it. So It's not comforting at all. <laughs> no, it's really no. not. A lot of tension. <laughs> Now this, this part of the level is fun because it helps me remind people that Sonic is really not all about speed, Sonic is about platforming. Sure. And when you're underwater with the slow motion platforming there, it, it's a, a good reminder that the practice is what it takes to kind of stay to the, the faster high path. Right now, this song will be familiar. Oh yeah. This is the in in invincibility shield yeah, where you can it just is. like yep. take down anyone that gets in your way. So as we're going through here, uh, let's see. Now these red platforms are ones that will actually fall down. So what I want to do is jump on it right about here. There we go. And pull it off. Got it. Nice. So the first time you go on those, typically you'll jump on it really quickly, and, and it'll fall before you have a chance to jump to the next platform. So the trick is to actually wait till it goes a little further and then jump on it. But as with all things in, in many levels, it takes some practice to nail it. And that's kind of how it should be. I, I enjoy the fact that it does take some practice to get to the best paths in, in any Sonic For game. For sure. So these cannons are kind of cool. They were in the original uh, level, and the cannons themselves kind of would, would fire you across, and they brought them back. So every level sort of has its iconic features, its iconic gimmicks from back in the day, and they've tried to recreate all of those in this version of the game. So let's see if we can pull this part off. Perfect. Now, even though Classic Sonic never technically would, went through this level, um, what you'll find is that there are references to other levels hidden in it, I actually, I need to get to the low path. Let's see here. So, do you play this game in its infancy stages and sort of suggest 
what you think will make it better or yeah, a lot how, of people, how does that work? A lot of people at Sega actually sort of offer feedback and improvement and we have lots of teams that, that do that. Um, so my, my voice is one of many voices at Sega that, uh, that all work really hard and we all kind of offer feedback to try and, and suggest this might make it better, that might make it better. Very cool. And to, to their, especially to their credit too, the, the team in Japan does a fantastic job of really coming up with good ideas that, that make fans go, oh my gosh, that is, that's awesome. So we've got these giant wheels trying to kill us here. Let's keep going. <laughs> there we go. And though I took the high path, if you take this the low path in Modern level, Sonic, we've got uh, the boost. We're going very quick, very, excuse me, very fast. Um, right here, we've got multiple different paths we can take. I'm going to go on the left path because I practiced on this one a little bit more. <laughs> so the music also is different, um, and it's not as easy to pick up, but this is going to be like the, the guitar modern version of it. And every level has two different tracks to it. You've got your modern version of the song, and then you've also got your classic version of the song. Um, and some of the classic versions um, actually were, were written and composed and worked on by um, other people that were Sonic fans. So in one case, we've got one of the guys who did the Sonic Colors theme song. Um, he helped contribute with some of the uh, City Escape remixes. And in that remix, as fans have noticed, uh, Sonic Boom, which was our big E3 party, he snuck in the, uh, the melody to one of the Sonic 3 multiplayer levels called Endless Mine. And it was, it was very cleverly worked in, and uh, the fans noticed it and immediately picked up on it, saying, oh my gosh, whoever put that in there is, is amazing. So, <laughs> there was a band that did the, the theme song for Sonic Colors, or, or that was a different... That same band. It's the younger brother in that band. He's a massive Sonic fan. Oh, wow. Um, awesome. And so I, I got to nerd out with him and uh, <laughs> found out he, was, he did that remix, and I was like, that, that was you? You put that Endless Mind thing in there? Gosh, that's awesome. That's so, super cool. so cool. It's, it's really neat because of, of the, the simple aspect that we've got Sonic fans right. that are, are working on you know, this 20th anniversary game with the older generation. So Sonic Generations in one way is, you know, the two generations of Sonic. In another way, it is the two generations of fans. And in another way, it's also the different generations of people that are working on it. They, they grew up as fans and they're now trying to, I know, kind of leaving their mark on, on Sonic, if you will, working with the old awesome. crew. Many meanings behind the title. Yes, there definitely are. So as we speed through here, let's see, I'm going to slow down to this part. We can go different paths depending on what we do. I oh, wanna, that's cool. I want to wait for the cart, and then I want to boost right through there. Let's go. There we go. Got it. Now, if I get the turtle, that means I go the very slow route. You can see on the bottom there, actually, it's a lot of heavy platforming. In this case, we're just going to jump on our little go-kart and go. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, awesome. We can boost in this, yeah. Sonic cart. So, yeah, a little, little Sonic and Sega All-Stars vibe going on here. Um, or I feel like, like Sonic, Sonic would be too cool for a car. <laughs> yeah, you know, he would run faster than it. I feel like he doesn't really need the car. It's, it's mostly for style points. Yeah, that's a good, <laughs> good, good, good point. <laughs> so we can go off the ramps, get extra rings here. This path is uh, its much faster to go through this path as opposed to trying to platform. So, oh, And then cool. he just destroys the car at the end. He didn't really need it anyway. <laughs> <That's> he just <laughs> trashed it. <laughs> Insurance rates are terrible. But. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the grinding going on and then the wall running. Whoa, oh, wow. Wall running that's Sonic. tough. Got it. Perfect. So we're on the high path right here. This one's kind of tricky. Let's see if oh. we can pull it off. Nice. So we're wall jumping in between here. Keep going. Nice. So the pillars come down. We've got to try and quickly get across. There we go. Perfect. Now those red rings you saw there, you can collect those. Just like in Sonic Colors, you can collect those. Um, in this game, they offer a number of different unlockables. Those are the fun unlockables I can't talk about just yet, but uh, we're trying to get run over here. Oof. All right. Go very Whoa. quickly. <laughs> Alright. Just in the nick of time. And that's the end wow. of that level. Added a lot so there's Seaside Hill. It's modern song. It's so it's perfectly vague. I love it. it. It's perfectly vague. <laughs> You'll be happy. That's what I will say. <laughs> so here it is. Oh, wow. That's awesome. The Death Egg Robot. Classic Sonic. Not about to let that happen. It's got the attitude. Now, Classic Sonic doesn't actually talk at all. You can hear um, Eggman in the background there, but Classic Sonic won't speak. We decided that Classic Sonic should uh, should actually remain mute, just like he was in the original games, and right. instead what Classic Sonic does is he, he shows what he intends to do via his actions. So with this boss, you've got to find the weak point. I have just shown you the weak point. Typically it takes two or three minutes to kind of figure out what you're doing here. Now was that the case in Sonic 2? Because I remember I would always cheat and I would find a, an area on top where I could just con constantly <laughs> bounce on top and it <laughs> you would hug you would hug the corner of the screen and just and just keep <laughs> right, right. attacking from the top. I don't know if you could do that here. No, in this one you have to fight him a little bit differently. You can't just ram into him like the, the other one could. Is that true though? Is that accurate? Could you do that? Or is that just I, my I don't know that trick personally, but it, it could very well exist. So 
Now at this point, the music actually starts to pick up. You'll hear everything starts to happen. And what we've got to do is get these bombs to trigger right as he swings his fist at them there. Try this one here. Come on, buddy. So we wait for it. And then run. Oh, wow. Oh, almost got him. Now this version of the song actually is, is one of my favorites. There's a lot of good remixes out there that fans have done too, but this song is kind of a, just a really epic moment in the, the Sonic history, I think. And after you take the arm out, we spin down it, flop him on the head. Now I have practiced this maybe five, yeah, you're ten, making this look easy. 20 times. Yeah. Uh, this is the first boss, so it's not the hardest boss, but it's, uh, it's also a little bit harder. It's just like a, a good Genesis boss where it takes some practice the very first time. Right. And then once you've got that pattern down, it, it's pretty easy from there on in. So with that, we'll take out Eggman and his walker. And that was quick. I don't know if I could do that that quick. <laughs> the first time, it, it would probably take you, I'd, I'd say, five to ten minutes to, to pull it off. Yeah. Um, it's actually a very fun boss in, in that regard. And the music, too, really brings it back.